To Joey, Chris, and Gabe, master of the universe horror podcast, which by the way rocks. My name is Suzanne Snyder and you guys need to listen to this podcast. Thanks. Welcome back, everyone, to Master of the Universe podcast, or like some people like to say, welcome back to Master of the Universe horror podcast. I'm your host, Joey Cage, motherfucker, and Christopher J. and uh, the Man Beast. We got uh, episode 62, and we're talking about Lighthouse, man, and this is a Gabe pick. But before we get into the movie, I want to know what you guys are into right now. Of course, like my new favorite thing, you know, shoot the shit. You know, what are you watching? What are you drinking? You know, who's getting over on what? What are you jamming to? Any additions to the collections? All that shit. So, Chris, you want to get yourself over, son? Well, Joe? Right, right now, I just uh, just had two shots of uh, Captain Morgan. 100 proof. Uh, Watching-wise, I got uh, started on season one of Ray Donovan. We're on episode five, season one of Ozarks. Trying to get into this new show. This new show we finished up, uh, Warrior, which is a badass series. I can't wait for season three. Yeah, for sure. Can't, can't wait for uh, season four of Cobra Kai. So, and uh, in, in the midst of all that, uh, we're going through the hustle and bustle and nonstop. You need to do this, need to do that, of buying a house. Complaining nonstop, right, Rose? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you would think a motherfucker be more happy. He's getting the house. I was like, motherfucker, they trying to fuck me. I'm like, fuck him. It's gonna be left alone. So, Gabe, what are you into, man? What's going on with you this week? And what's the news on everything here? Ooh, well, uh, to go real quickly through everything, uh, as far as news goes, uh, there is a movie coming out September 21st. It's an animated retelling of the classic Night of the Living Dead. Now, it's animated, and it's just like the, uh, the original movie that we all know and love. But what's cool about it is the animation. This isn't like Toy Story or, you know, one of these Pixar type of animation type of movies. This is like, uh, the, the way this comes off uh, across to me is like watching those old Spawn uh, Showtime uh, Remember that old uh, Spawn cartoon series? The 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 way it was just the way it was created, the way it designed. I don't know if you all saw that, but yeah. that's the way this uh, this movie uh, comes across as, and it's uh it looks pretty neat. I, I thought as uh, they have like a small trailer up, so I mean you can scout around for that. Put animated movie or cartoon movie of Night of Living Dead. So that's pretty neat. Uh, if you're into video games, uh, uh, Dead by Daylight, that popular game. Well, they're always updating new skins, so you can... The idea is that you're, like, the killer, and you're chasing after your friends. So, they have a new skin coming out in September, which is the the new skin for it will be Pinhead. Okay. So, you can run around as Pinhead from Hellraiser and going around just, well, just like the damn game does, you know, just killing people. I, mean, I, could, I could go around just uh, talking people to death in a real intellectual, serious, deep voice and tell people to purify themselves in the waters of Lake Minnetonka? Well, yeah, that's exactly what you can do. I mean, pretty much they'll just drop down dead from boredom, but yeah. Well, can do hello, that. hello, Dave Chappelle. I'm a huge fan of your comedies. Uh, Dave Chappelle? <laughs> <laughs> why, don't, why don't you and your brother uh, assemble your crew and meet me outside? That skit where they play basketball and shit. Yeah, and, That's... uh... Well, as far as that, the only other thing I have is that if you got Amazon Prime, uh, Amazon Prime is, uh, hooking up with, uh, Bloomhouse Productions. Uh, they've made quite a few horror movies, yep. and they're coming out with, uh, four new movies to go ahead and start off the whole season for October, which is pretty cool. Uh, the name of the four movies is, uh, Bingo Hell, Black as Night, Mandarus, and The Manor. 
So October 1st, both of those, and then they'll have two more movies coming out on October 8th. So it'll give you something to watch to start off the season. So if you want to see something new, something different, you like Bloomhouse type of horror movies, I mean, there you go. Amazon Prime will have those uh, for free. You don't have to pay for those if you already have Amazon. So I thought that was pretty neat. They uh, um, they did Chris's uh, uh, favorite movie, that new Invisible Man. So he's like, he doesn't know it, but yeah, he's in a. And they did uh, Happy Happy Death Day, uh, Get Out, Split, a lot of the newer cool horror movies. So yeah, definitely interested in that. Just so you know, Prime, you get like a free, you know, it, that's what's badass about the time we live in. You were talking about like how fucking shitty it was to live in the Dracula era and shit. It's like nowadays <laughs> we just put on like, oh, you got this. They started streaming badass shit. So yeah, that's that sounds exciting actually. I'm really. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I saw those, so I'm definitely going to check those out. And um, as far as anything else, uh, I, I had pretty much a uh, good fun with uh, my, my buddy Johnny, or John E. Sachs. That's uh, the name that he likes to go by. Uh, we had fun this last weekend, pretty comic book day. We were just kind of scouting around Austin, trying to get uh, certain books and everything. Yeah, we dropped a uh, pretty big bucks on uh, certain comics <laughs> and uh, mm-hmm. special editions. So, met uh, some comic artists, pretty awesome. And then this weekend is going to be fun. If you check out my Instagram, I'm going to have some video of me acting stupid because I will be going to the Witty Museum. They have a thing called the Whiskey Business. It's pretty much like a Comic Con, but for whiskeys, bourbons, and scotches. Right All on these my. Dip- huh? Right up my alley. Exactly. It's a bunch of vendors. You're just sampling all this uh, types of liquors, all types of mixed drinks and stuff like that. And, and it's, it's not... craft beers of of liquor. I just call that a I just call that a Thursday night. That's you know. <laughs> that's a typical Thursday night. <laughs> well, it, it'll be nice for me because it, it it'll be good just to get out of the house, you know, do a little something something. You know, me and the wife have been looking forward to this. You know, so they'll have some food vendors uh, there. It, I kind of feel like this whole thing is just mostly geared towards people with businesses like that run bars or other type of uh, kind of uh, alcohol dis- uh, establishments and stuff like that. But either way, I mean, if you're just like a person just wanting to get out and stuff, I understand the whole COVID thing. You just want to go and get out and get drunk and shit, you know? I hear you. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, pretty much what I, I told the wife what I'm going to plan on doing is say, hey, look, look, record me. Hey, guys, this is me, blah, blah, blah. This is drink number one. Before you know it, by the time I get to drink You're going to be 15, talking all different and shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll be talking to myself. This is drink number 15. <laughs> and then the, last, over here. the last video was just you <laughs> sleeping and shit, pass the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> thrown up all over myself i went overboard and, yeah <laughs> <laughs> she's just recording you in the bathroom <laughs> yeah all butt naked for some damn reason <laughs> <laughs> i thought we were at home <laughs> not here oh yeah. shit that sounds that sounds like fun dude so shit so other than that i mean that's that's all i got for personally and just as far as the news so that's all I got for right now. <laughs> what's, your, what's your fascination with Whataburger, man? I mean, you eat that like every week almost damn near. Oh, man. Well, it, it, it's it's quick. It's on the go. And damn shit tastes really good, man. Yeah. I kid you not. Like, my 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 main things is Dr. Pepper, yeah. Jack Daniels, yeah. Whataburger, yeah. and then just just overall just Asian food, man. I just I yeah. just like the Asian food. Hell yeah. You know, chick- Chicken fried rice or something like that. Some egg rolls. That shit's good. But, oh, no, man. I, I love Whataburger. I'm even wearing a Whataburger t-shirt right now, man. Oh, just... <laughs> Dedication. <laughs> Dedication, man. I'm surprised I don't have the damn socks. You know, shit. <laughs> I... uh, no, I just, I don't know, man. I love Dr. Pepper. love Whataburger. That shit's, uh, I, you know, it, if I don't have my lunch or I'm just like, I don't feel like cooking for dinner or anything. I'm just like, hey. We're getting Whataburger today. You know, today's a good day. I'm going to get Whataburger. Why yeah. not? It's on the go. That shit's good. Why not? So, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean. There ain't nothing I, wrong with it. There ain't nothing wrong with it, son. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, I'm a big fan of Whataburger, too. I just, um, 
I never go just because I hate waiting in line all the fucking time, you know. And then and then one time I was gonna order it like delivery. And it was like ten ninety nine for delivery. Like, Are you fucking nuts? What are you fucking nuts? You know. Um, but yeah, big fan of that. Um. I mean, I've been I've been jamming the new Maiden uh, songs that have been coming out. I talked about it last time. They had a one, uh, what's it called, um, Riding on the Wall. But it's more folky. At first, I didn't really like go too crazy for it. But after a few listens, I was like, okay, I get it now. And this next one called uh, Stratego is really good. You know, I like it's a real fast pace, more sounds more like Maiden than the other one. Um, so I can't wait to hear the album. It's coming out September, I think, 3rd. So man, I always it's always a big old exciting thing when a new Iron Maiden album comes out and you know it kind of sucks um before you know like before they would they would you know have an album every year and then every 2 years, every 3 and now it's like every 5 or 6 years so like big old gaps so it's been a while but um jamming September that a Friday so you wake up to the last day of the work week and a new Iron Maiden song Oh yeah, I'm gonna be jamming. I'm gonna be all pissed off. Like, can't can't these people stop calling so I can jam the fuck out already? But I'll, I'm sure I'll be, you know, listening to it all hardcore, you know, at my brothers and having that full blast. Uh, yeah, and uh, watching wise, yeah, a bunch of TV shows. Mark got me into to the show Bosch on Prime, and then uh, Ray Donovan. I fucking killed all seven seasons in like less than two weeks, right, Chris? <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, really good shows. Uh, probably the best show I've seen, Ray Donovan. And I've watched a bunch of shows. You know, I watched Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones. I haven't seen Sopranos. I know Chris is getting that one over. Um, might do that one eventually. Um, and that's about it. Yeah, as far for me. And then you know, eating wise, of course, Wink stops. Gonna make a comeback this week. I've been craving that shit. So, and then I, I'm right on there with with Team Dr Pepper with you, Gabe. I'm like, Ooh, it's like my, my my favorite drink, dude. But Oh hey, for for tomorrow night, I don't I don't think I'm gonna be going to Danny's. My dad's coming in into town tomorrow night. It's all good, dude. You you don't gotta announce it on the podcast, but yeah, it's fine, dude. I, I figured <laughs> I, I figured <laughs> since you were moving, uh, you know, you probably weren't, but you know, Chris is moving by the way, so um, getting a house. But anyway, dude, let's uh let's talk a little bit before we take our break here about Lighthouse. Now, you know, Gabe, you know. What made you want to do this review for for Lighthouse? Well, I mean, it, first it, it's uh, starring William Defoe. Yeah. Uh, that, Green I, I Goblin. Like that. That, that's that's how I see him. That's all I can see him as. Like he's just like he just has that face where he's just like he looks crazy looking. But yeah, Green Goblin. That's how I know that guy. So, you know, I saw him that he was going to be in this and that. I saw a trailer for it, A24 films. Uh, I mean, yeah, I was like, sure, why not? You know, I'm all in. You know, a damn sailor movie, you, you don't see too many of that. And so, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's about a lighthouse. It's uh, it's about two men. Rob, uh, for the ladies, Robert Patterson. Uh, he's like from the Twilight movies. That that was uh, that was much that... Rosie. Right away, Rosie pointed that out. Yeah, that that was the same thing with my wife too. She, she was just like that was a, she was all in when she saw that guy. She's all, I have to. I seen all the Twilight movies so many times. I read the books. I have to watch this movie now. He's in it. I'm like, oh my lord. <laughs> I mean, there could be other reasons. The Green Goblin's in it. Hey, hey, yeah. remind, me, hey remind me, Willem Dafoe. That's the that's the Scottish arr, captain guy, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, do, do you know? When I after after I had gotten about an hour into this movie, that's when I pulled up the Wikipedia. I was like, okay, I wanna I wanna read a little bit about this movie now that I'm deep into it. So I did, uh-huh. and that's what I saw. That's the dude that played Jesus in Last Temptation of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't see that. One. Now no 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 before before you laugh or remark or does do you know and the notes oh it's movie about Jesus no do you know what Last Temptation of Christ is? I do not no. do. It is a movie written by a Greek Orthodox priest and produced by Martin Scorsese. It is a movie that suggests, a, a posits a theory, a possibility of what if Jesus had a sexual desire for Mary Magdalene? And what if he, in a temptation by the devil, gave in, had, had sexual relations with Mary Magdalene, had a family, and yet still encounters Paul... The Apostle Paul preaching the word of Christ 
And then he comes back, he leaves that hallucination, goes back to the cross, dies, and saves humanity. But before he went through with saving humanity on the cross, he had that temptation of going through with banging Mary Magdalene. That's the movie. I had to watch it for a theology class when I was in college. I expect the same kind of breakdown on the lighthouse now. So, um, it, it's funny how he's like talking about this, and I'm like drawing a damn black goat look like Black Philip right now. You know, trying to make like some demon art while <laughs> while we're talking about this. So it's just like, oh well, I guess we're going with the whole religious thing now. Yeah. It's history of religion. I got you on that. Oh yeah, that's why. That's why you had the band. You know, it's like yeah, that, all the shit, all, like all the shit that I'm never gonna remember, and like in anything that has to do with where people come from or the background. It's like Chris. Oh yeah, I know that one. <laughs> but um, I mean, I, I want to go to Chris first of all before we get. Well, you know what? Let's just call it in the ring. Why don't you talk about the film and we'll just discuss it as we're going along and point out some things. And then of course, you know how we do it. We'll uh, talk about you know just about the our experience but go ahead Gabe give, give us a little how the film starts off I know at first the first 20 minutes I was like oh shit with that fucking was it called a foghorn yeah that was so eerie and so haunting the whole movie yeah the, so to kind of get to kind of uh, pretty much what this whole movie is I consider it there's movies that are action movies. Like, you know, you got Fast and the Furious. You got these Marvel movies. You got all these type of other, you know, even horror movies. You know, they're movies. This one is, to me, is artsy. Mm-hmm. It, it, like, it is artsy left to right. Even just the way it is, like, filmed. You know, where you got, like, the widescreen view where the black bars are on the top? No, this one's one of those. It's on the sides. It squeezes it up. I, I forgot what the ratio is, like 1 to 19 ratio or something. This is a film. I, this is an artsy film. And I kid you not, like the the acting out of these characters and just how they carry themselves, they speak in that kind of sailor t- uh, tone. They, they carry themselves that way. This is New England, 1890. So for them to go ahead and... Uh, speaking the way they do and how they carry themselves it's pretty much the only thing that's there for fun for these guys is drinking that that's their that's their fun now what this whole movie's about it's about a uh it's about a young man who ends up taking up a job as a wiki now a wiki is just another term for a lighthouse keeper so he said I, yeah, I, 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 I thought you were going to say something else <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I you know, because I, I had heard him saying these words, and um, I, I like Chris. After I watched it, I'm like, what the fuck is that? And, he, and like, it has a link to what they are and all that. And I was like, completely, like I was like, I'm not gonna call him that because I just, I'm not gonna remember that word. So, but go on, proceed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kid you not. When I first watched this damn movie, uh, I had trouble like trying to carry, like trying to figure out. I knew more or less what they were talking about, but to know the exact, you know, kind of references or definitions, like what these people are talking about, it's kind of beyond me. So I, I also, too, had to go back and start looking this up. I saw this in the movie theater. Hey, and, uh, can I, I just throw this I, out here real quick? 
Yeah, go for it. And and you'll remember this because you 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 were the same grade as me. So <laughs> no, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I hope I remember it. <laughs> remember, remember in tenth grade we had to read fucking uh, Macbeth. <laughs> and well, that's uh, that's kind of. Forget tenth grade. Like, I mean, I kind of I kind of goofed off a lot in school. Yeah. I did, but I, but I still remember some of it, but. Oh, uh, Chris! Chris did never goofed off. He's fucking lying again. That motherfucker was all raising his hand, you know. That motherfucker's still raising his hand, dude. What are you talking about? Not in any other class. I was dumb as fuck, but, but um, but did you did you ever read Macbeth at all? The actual book. What I, is your I, fascination? Why don't you talk yeah. about Macbeth instead of asking him? Talk about well, fucking Macbeth. You, Okay, well, no, because I wanted to see if he understood where I was going with this. Okay, so you did. No, like, no one, I, no, I, no one understands where I you're remember, going. I remember we had to read it, but don't make me quote anything from. Yeah, the I remember that. I remember that I name. Know. I don't even know. I don't even remember what that is. But I mean, go, you know, go, go ahead and say your piece. You know, do you remember when you first opened that book and you're reading it? That dialogue made no fucking. It was this. It was this 17th century Scottish dialogue of Eng, dialect of English. I couldn't understand a fucking thing they were saying. If it wasn't for the teacher breaking down the chapters the next day after what we were supposed to read the night before, if it wasn't for Miss Hartley, I think, or Miss Hartman, or Hartley, whatever her name was, if it wasn't for her breaking it down, I would never have understood that fucking book. And and that's what a lot of this is here. See, this captain, this fucking Willem Dafoe, he's a fucking, like, old-school Scottish Navy captain-type dude. You know, and he's going to talk in that, like, working class Scotsman dialect and then use a bunch of Navy language and Navy jargon. And yeah, if you don't have the fucking captions on, you're not going to catch it. Chris, I got one question for you since you're rambling. <laughs> Good. You're fond of me lobster, aren't you? <laughs> I seen it. I want steak. I'd fuck it if I had a steak. I started laughing because you got like a completely different accent with the with the, you know Defoe, you know, and then you got you know what is it Robert Patrick or what is his name? Robert no. Patterson. Robert Patterson. Patterson. He's and, not the uh, two thousand. <laughs> and he's like, if I had a steak right now, like it's kind of like a like like a east east uh, you know side of the of, of uh, United States kind of accent or some shit, dude. It's just it's kind of like a Boston Rhode Island accent that yeah. He, like, yeah. You don't hear it at first, but then when he starts getting mad, it comes out. Yeah, it's like it's because I'm expecting them both to sound kind of Scottish, you know, and they don't, you know, and so it's it really stood out. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just want to know if you were fond of me lobster. That was all that. No harm done. I had to put the fucking subtitles on. Like I was like after like the first two minutes, and like I'm pretty good with hearing accents. I you know I had a I had a lady that had a fucked up you know accent, and then of course. I'm a big fan of Iron Maiden. I'm talking about it, so I always hear their interviews, and they have real like they don't open their mouth when they talk. It's real, you know, British, you know, shit. And when I heard this, I was like, "What the fuck is he?" You know, first because it's like the accent, but also the words, because you know, "yeah" or "yeah" and all that bullshit that they say. So you know, I felt like I was watching uh, the witch, but with the fucked up, you know, Scottish accent or whatever the fuck he is. Bill Wilkins in what was in Conjuring Two was easier to understand. Oh yeah, way way easier. Yeah, I had to put the subtitles on, then I was like, okay. <laughs> so, but, um... Yeah, like, uh, man, it, it... Yeah, that I think that's, like, really interesting. I mean, not so much as just the characters, but for the actors themselves to remember those type of lines is, like, yeah. ridiculous. Like, I, I was just like... Because if you notice <laughs> that Robert Patterson doesn't even really speak too much, it, it's mostly all, uh... The fall, right? it's, yeah. it's all the Green Goblin there. <laughs> he's a, he's talking like that throughout the whole damn thing. If anything, he does the most talking throughout this whole damn movie, and it, it's ridiculous, like how we can remember so many weird, obscure lines. But I mean, man, he had to have uh, rehearsed those damn lines like so many times. He did a he did yeah. a really bad badass job. I had heard before I even watched the film. I had heard about how um, William Defoe, the Green Goblin you know, uh, Captain Wake or whatever they call him in the film, um, how good of a, a performance he had given. And I'm watching it, and I'm like, okay, you know, it's good. But then he does that one, you know, when he gets mad about the food thing, right? He starts giving that speech. And, like, that's one of the things, like, you're saying, like, man, he, you know, to learn, like, it's kind of like almost starting, like, a new language and shit, you know? And then to 
really deliver it the way he does i was like man this is like he's like he is the the horror aspect in this film with his craziness and his antics dude it's really fucking good right and uh well just uh well just like i was saying earlier like pretty much like uh for the whole audience to kind of get an idea of like what this movie what this movie really is uh, since we like described it pretty well the the idea behind it is like I was saying there's a there's a young man he's uh, going at, he applied or however he got hired for the job for being a lighthouse uh, lighthouse keeper and now he's starting to seek a career t- down this path now he needs training so he ends up being on board with this older gentleman which is you know William Defoe he's the uh, you know the Green Goblin so he's training him up how to be a how to be a lighthouse keeper well anyways they're stuck on this rock that this this little (laughs) island for the lighthouse the whole damn time it's just them two there is no television there is no radio it's just them two and the only form of entertainment they really have with each other is either to talk or to drink well leave it to the young man he doesn't want to talk at uh he doesn't want to talk he's just there to do a job you know, and that's it. And the Green Goblin's like, look, I've seen other men, you know, go crazy. You know, this is the entertainment. You should talk while you have the chance. I don't need to talk. No, you need to talk. Now, understand the way I'm explaining it. They're, <laughs> they're not talking like that. Ye should be talking ye now forth the ye. next day. So if a man don't drink, you best have his reasons. Yeah, yeah. See, it, and they talk like that. So I... Excuse me if I'm not going to quote them exactly, but <laughs> that one's funny because he didn't drink, and then like later on down the movie, he becomes the same kind of drinker. He, he does now. Uh, so at, at, uh, he starts his first day. They they start their first date now. Keep uh, it secrets, a, are ye? <laughs> there, there's an yeah, there's an excellent, uh, excellent little twist to this damn movie, which gives different perspectives on however way you watched it. But get so it's just these two guys. He's encouraging them to talk. He's all, uh, come on, blah blah blah, and he's uh, he's calling them lad throughout the whole damn like mm-hmm. throughout the whole this beginning, like first twenty minutes or so. He's telling him, look, lad, you need to do this and blah, blah, blah. Pretty much he's just a slave driver. He's giving them all sorts of things to do, uh, all kinds of chores. And he says, look, we're going to work in shifts. I got the night shift. You got the day shift. So all throughout the day, these are the chores you need to do. You need to clean out the gutters. You need to go ahead and put oil to the... Uh, put oil to the light, you know, keep that light shining. You need to go ahead and do this. You need to do that. So leave it to this guy. He's like, all right, I'll do all that, whatever. But he doesn't talk much, so he's just like, "Uh uh-huh, okay, all right, sir. So he's all like, "Set, look, you need to have a drink with me. And he's all, no, 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 I don't want a drink. No, you come on, you have to have a drink. You can't turn down a drink. It's bad luck. No, 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 tell you what, I'll do that. He dumps the drink, the liquor, into the sink, and he gets water and says, okay, there, now I'll have your drink. You know, I don't want to be, he's like, oh, you should have liquor, you know, it'll keep you, it keeps all the sailors happy, it'll keep, it keeps them loose and, uh, yeah, and agreeable. Yeah, and it also keeps them stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, how stupid do you think I am? He's all, ah, uh, hey, Mark. You know the.
So, at this point, so he's already like, he's already doing all his chores. He's doing everything he has to do, and so leave it to the Green Goblin. You're neglecting your him. duty, slide. Don't deny it. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, he's pushing fucking him. him he's with him. Right? him just fucking with people, kid. Yeah, and he's all like, "No, I've been doing all my stuff. I've been doing it." He's all, "I, I, I, mopped, mopped, I, I mopped and swept twice. I was your lying dog." <laughs> I love when he's coming after him. Did you imagine Ray being like the the commander of like a, a naval entity like this to oh some other guy? God, he'd be like, "Man, I I took down seven whales on this here island, kid. You know, barehanded, yeah. I did." <laughs> <laughs> just me and them lifeboat we took on a couple of blue whales yeah anyway <laughs> well at this point tensions are rising the green goblins egging him on he's in, he keeps pushing him and you know leave it to effort he gets tired of it and he says look just quit calling me lad well when am I supposed to call you Winslow Ephraim Winslow. All right, Ephraim Winslow. I'm telling you now, lad. I, Winslow, I mean. Winslow. You need to do your chores and blah, blah, blah. And he, he's going off on a rant. And so now you find out the young guy's name is Ephraim Winslow. The other guy, uh, the captain, ends up, they all getting drunk. And he says, look, look. My name is Wake. What? Thomas Wake. That's your name. Thomas Wake. Yep. So he finally encouraged him, or Ephraim Winslow, or Robert Patterson, Twilight. They encouraged him to drink. So all of a sudden, they start. They had one drink. Before you know it, they start really going to town, and they start getting drunk. Before you know it, they're going back and forth. They're shooting all kinds of stories. What? 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 That's what I mean. What? That's a trouble with it. <laughs> they're going back and forth. What, 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 what? <laughs> yeah, so the further you get into the story, you realize tensions are just... The tensions are really getting higher. They're really arguing at each other. Even at one point, Robert Patterson's doing his chores, and he's pissed off. And he ends up seeing a seagull, and he gets pissed off at that seagull. And he goes ahead and ends up like, ah, get away. And he throws a rock at it, and the bird flies off. Well, anyways, later on, uh, Wake, or the captain, ends up, or a green goblin, ends up telling him, hey, I saw you fighting with that gull not that long ago. Yeah. Don't be doing that. Don't you dare kill it. Well, why not? What, what does it matter? Don't you kill those seagulls. That's bad luck. What do you mean? Seagulls that's have bad the luck? souls of dead sailors. Yes, exactly. So that that was his reasoning. He says, ah, uh, the seagull. He said the seagulls are are the reincarnation of like souls that uh, had met their maker. Uh, from sailors out at sea that met their maker, and, they and, ended up being incarnated as seagulls. And there, I, I didn't realize it till I watched it twice. Um, but I know they were like talking about his second, his second guy, the, and I was like, um, or his whatever he calls him, his second that that killed himself or he died or whatever. And the seagulls right. got seagulls got one eye, and then like yeah, like he sees like a head in like some kind of um, where they're catching the food. It's got one or eye. Lobster trap. Yeah, and then and so everyone ends up having like one eye in this thing. Like if they are like yeah, like the reincarnation things. And I was, it was just crazy when once um you watch it again, like because at first you're like, what the fuck am I watching, you know? And then you start, you know, you get into it as, you know, um, they build it up more, and then you watch it again. Like well, once you're done watching it, you watch it again. You're like, oh okay, it makes kind of like uh, what's that other movie called? Um, the one with all the witchcraft shit, a uh, hereditary. <laughs> Yeah, Suspiria too, but Hereditary, like, where at first you're like, what the fuck is all this? And then you, and then you, you kind of, like, get the big reveal. You're like, wow, I got to watch it again now. And that's the way it was the second time watching it. I was like, okay, you know, doing that Chris, that Chris routine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, my wife, my wife hates seagulls. I don't know why, but she hates seagulls. She thinks they're evil birds. And so the part where he grabs that one seagull by the wing oh. and just, like, just, like, banging it against the fucking doldrums. That was and brutal, dude. I, I I feel bad for that seagull. Fuck. <laughs> You're cheering for it. Oh no. Um, I was. I, 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 I saw that. I started laughing. And shit. I, I was like, he fucked funny. up. I was like, he fuck. He fucked up. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah, like he got like after he was warned 
not to be doing shit, and he does it anyways. He's all like, I don't give a shit. And he fucking got pissed off at that damn seagull. He grabbed that shit by the damn wing or the leg or whatever and just started smashing it against this rock. And then just kept, he went to town on that shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just like, what the hell? I was like, this guy cannot be that angry. He took out all his frustration and anger from William Defoe yeah. or the Green Goblin out on this damn seagull. So that that was my interpretation of like why he did it. Not so much as like yeah. he was testing luck as itself, but I think it was just more as he took his frustrations out. Uh, at, as the as the movie starts furthering out, uh, tensions start rising, and like you said, there was uh, there was a mention of that he had a previous. His uh, second mate, whatever they call it, whatever. His what do you second call mate, him? yeah, or or a attendee or a apprentice or something like that or trainee. Uh, but he supposedly, you know, he's supposedly dead, you know, some kind of accident or who knows what. But they don't really talk much into it. So uh-huh. then he starts having his, his suspicions that he's a. Uh, I think you killed them. You killed your second mate. That's it. I know your secret. He's all, all right, you be talking full of nonsense. You be drunk and all this stuff. He, because at one point, Robert Patterson just kind of gives up and just he's frustrated with the whole ordeal. So he starts getting drunk all on his own. And at one point, he argues with William Defoe so intensely while Defoe is like, he, he wasn't even drinking at all, but Robert Patterson was. And he argues with him so intensely that Defoe gets so pissed, he describes in great detail how he will die, how he will meet his gruesome death. And basically, it's like cursing him. So, and he and he's all, look, I just want to let you know, I hate your cooking. Your cooking sucks. Yeah. And he's all, you know, but not my lobster, right? No, you're lobster, fond of you know. me, lobster. Say it, say it. And he's like, no. He's like, say it, say it. The, say my lobster is good. Ye say it. No, no, it sucks. No, no, it sucks. <laughs> All right, by the depths of Met- Neptune, grab his trident, and by the curls of the coils, wrap around ye neck. I will stab at thee as your intestines bleed out, and seagulls gut at your palate, and pulleth thee away. I'm like, oh shit. And he's all, all right, all right. I like your cooking. You have, <laughs> have it your way. <laughs> have it your way. I, I, like- I, I that, that was really awesome, that, that whole scene. Uh, when he goes, yeah, you're like Neptune, strike you down, Winslow, and then like the the thunder, the thunder, because um, I had, I've never I've heard the word before, but like seeing the um, the subtitles where I've heard hark, you know, hark, and then you know th- it thunders and he he talks about the Triton, like you said, and all that, and uh, the the cockle shells, and I'm like, man, this motherfucker's cutting a promo on fucking you know Winslow and shit. <laughs> I was like, never, that's why I was like, oh, I have a year away, you know. Badass scene, dude. Yeah, that was that. That was like a really great scene because, like I said, I gotta give William Defoe that because for him to remember all those damn lines mm-hmm. in a specific order, it was crazy. You know, it's like wow. I, I kind of felt since this was one of those artsy movies, I kind of felt like I needed to stand up and applaud him just for that yeah. moment because that that was ridiculous. Cool. But that's but that's method acting. That's a guy like if you're gonna play a role like that and say lines like that, most people are going to be that good. They're going to remember that shit off the top. So, oh. I mean, you are if you have to immerse yourself in that mindset and, like, read about people like that in that era. Right. And, and I think that's what he did exactly. <laughs> I think he went and did his history. And uh, just to get into that kind of acting, that was ridiculously good. But uh, aside from that, so... I, I mentioned this part because this also has to do this has to do with the ending. Uh, so <laughs> as the as the story continues, what the, else is funny? The farts and shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So as the story progresses, it really starts getting intense. He's having visions of this mermaid throughout the movie, and that's uh, to kind of kill time or kind of give him some kind of relaxation 
he would go into the working shed that they have for this lighthouse and well he'll just go to town on himself just to have just to give that release so he'll go to town and but he wasn't just kind of looking into nowhere or looking at the wall he found like a little mermaid kind of like a little carving like a little uh yeah idol like a little figurine yeah. and so he was going to town on that trying to imagine like you know a half naked mermaid you know you know, a, a beautiful girl, but I mean, man, she's all, you know, half mermaid. So I mean, how beautiful can she really yeah. be? You know, she smells like fish down there for sure. So, oh, definitely. <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't doubt that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, so it <laughs> uh, so the visions of this mermaid start getting a little more intense and he's starting now it's starting to look like he's having hallucinations throughout this damn movie so now you're just like oh what the heck is going on you know is this movie is this like is this the the hallucinations or is this actually like you yeah. know is he really seeing stuff it goes back and forth and it leaves it kind of vague to where like a, as an example he sees the mermaid he freaks out he he starts running but the moment he starts running, he goes through the door. He's talking to the captain, and everything's like normal. So you don't know if he's hallucinating or this is like actually real. It leaves everything kind of vague, so you don't. Eh, it's kind of up in the air. You don't know what you're really seeing. Again, this is an artsy film. Along with that, there's tentacles from a de from damn octopus. Uh, he's seen visions of people like looking all kind of weird, and they have scales and weird shit. So even William Defoe at one point uh, ended up having like these little coils or seashells and shit like that all over him while he's getting the crap beat out of him. Yes, the the, the argument between them increased so much where they ended up getting into a damn fight. Now, at this point, they both kind of they both get drunk. Uh, they both get drunk and he's all they really bad and he goes Robert Patterson ends up saying, "Hey, there's something I really need to tell you." He goes, "What, Winslow?" He's, uh, I need to tell you, I don't want to hear your, your secrets, your, don't spill your beans. Well, don't spill my, no, I need to tell you because I trust you. No, no, don't spill your beans. Well, he does it anyways. He's, uh, look, my name's not really Ephraim Winslow. No, 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 it's Thomas Howard. Thomas Howard? <laughs> oh, okay. So... And I came here because there was an accident with uh, pretty much from a co-worker from back wherever he was from. I, I, I missed that part. I don't know if he I think he was from Canada or something like that. But he's from somewhere. Uh, he's from somewhere where they were doing a lot of logging and his friend yeah. ended up getting killed amongst the logs and he says he couldn't he couldn't say or do anything other than get a smoke he said that was the only the only thing that ran through his mind was getting a smoke so like he just needed a cigarette and he's all, I had no expression Can I, I had just no because huh? I think about this the old school logging industry they had these water canals where the logs would travel uh, after they'd been cut into solid logs and debranched and everything. And right. so what would happen is, it's called, you know, the old school expression, log jam. Well, that's because what happened is, like, the logs would jam up and they wouldn't move and they'd stop. So what you have to do is you had to, what they would do back then is throw dynamite at a series of logs until, like, some of them would break up enough that they'd start moving again. And this guy died in a dynamite accident. And he did yeah. nothing to stop it or help the guy. He just let him die because he didn't like him. Yeah, there you go. And uh and see and that and at that point uh he took on the name Ephraim Winslow. Now it, it suggested that he I, I guess he took on the name or that identity uh because of that or whatever it is. He just he he took on that name and he just I guess he's running away now. He just you know that was it. He he just wanted to be just kind of be left in solitude, or he's trying to seek some type of uh, you know kind of redemption or something of that sort, and that's why he ended up going towards the lighthouse. Now at this point, so he spilled the beans 
to William Defoe. So now, later on, they sober up. They're all getting into arguments. They're all pissed off. They're trapped there. It. Robert Patterson at this point thinks that he's he's going to get he's going to get saved. Well, right before that moment, he ended up. Uh, they were under the suspicion thinking that they were going to get saved, that, you know, a ship was going to come and pick them up. But in that case, it didn't happen because there was a violent storm that was happening. And that's when he got drunk. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why they ended up getting drunk. They ended up uh, going through their reserve of uh, liquor. So at this point, they're just, uh, they're drinking. They got drunk. This whole thing happened. The storm is still going on. It's still violent weather outside. No ship's going to come because it's just too damn dangerous. So they have no choice but to be there. Well, the whole house is flooded. The whole cottage, this whole little lighthouse thing ends up happening. And it's flooded. He sees this record book that... He sees the record book that William Defoe's been keeping on him. Basically, that's his log book to say, like what kind of character this guy is, like what kind of worker this guy is. Well, he ends up putting down in there saying, hey, this guy sucks. He doesn't do his work. He's Uh, always drunk. He's lazy. (laughs) He's always drunk, even though he was the one encouraging it. Yeah. He's always drunk. It's bad times. I say uh, withhold his paychecks. You know, don't pay him. That's my suggestion. So, Leave it to Robert Patterson. He sees this and he's like, what the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. So now, now he's pissed off at William Defoe. He's pissed. And he's just like, oh, I'm going to kick your ass. And, you know, this is terrible. How could you? How could you say this? I saw your logbook. You killed your friend. Oh, whatever. You're just talking nonsense. Blah, blah, blah. Anyways, they go at it. Uh, they start beating the shit out of, uh, out of each other. But leave it to Robert Patterson, I think, because of his age. He's a lot younger. He just got the jump on him and just ended up beating the crap out of him. So he beats the crap out of him and says, look, you know, I'm going to go ahead and uh, treat you like the dog you are. You know, <laughs> now bark. Yeah, well, he walks him outside. <laughs> <laughs> He's That's his ass fucked bark. up. Yeah. So he makes him bark. He puts him on a like he puts some rope or whatever around his neck and drags his ass outside. Outside is a hole that was dug because that this is where they were keeping the reserve of liquor was uh, buried in the damn ground. So they dig uh, that hole is still there. Throws William Defoe's ass in there and William Defoe's all. Uh, he ends up giving some kind of small speech like, oh, do you know why you're really here or this and this? And, he, you know, Robert Patterson's already pissed. He doesn't really give a shit. So he's just like, whatever. He just starts trying to bury him alive. And he says, give me the damn keys or I'm really going to kill you. Give me the keys because he's been wanting throughout this whole damn movie, wanting to go see the light at the lighthouse. He's been wanting to see that. Why? Just who knows? Some, who knows? There's some, it's vague. It doesn't. Again, there's that vagueness that you don't understand. You just know that he wants to get there. So he. So anyways, he ends up taking the keys. He don't give a shit. Leaves William Defoe and laying in the damn hole with dirt all over him, and he goes. He starts make, trying to make his way over there. Well, he ends up going inside. He ends up uh, goes inside their little cottage stuff, and then guess who shows up? William Defoe. And he's making one last attempt to try to kick his ass because he <laughs> wants the light for himself. So he pulls out an axe, gets Robert Patterson in the arm, doesn't chop it off. Robert Patterson knocks his ass out with a pot, uh, uh, like a kettle, and uh, ends up pulling down, uh, pulling out the axe, whacks him right in the damn head. So that's the end of Green Goblin. You know, they just whack yeah. Him off. I, I could I couldn't believe that it fucking happened that way. I was like, holy shit! Like it just, you know. Yeah, he just uh, it, he just did not give a shit at that point because he already had everything else going to, uh, going against him. He thought he was going to get off the rock. He was stuck there. Uh, before this whole incident happened, he was telling them that he was hallucinating. He's all, I'm hallucinating. Yeah, yeah. And he's all, oh yeah. Then. Uh, He's all, I, I think all of this is the truth. He's all, no, no. He's all, how long do you think you've been here? A day? A month? A year? Do you you don't even know, do you? You don't even know how long we've been here. Well, uh, well. So, 
I can't, and leave it to all the vagueness. You can only assume there's different interpretations. You can see this. This guy is either in hell. He's probably hallucinating from all the damn liquor. Even at one point when they did run out of the liquor, they uh, they got um, uh, what was it? The alcohol and they mixed it with uh, like the gasoline. Yeah, uh, well, like uh, honey or something, ker- right? Kerosene. Yeah. yeah, he got kerosene and mixed it with honey, and they started drinking that. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's horrible. Which, which I mean, again, that that that's a way to make alcohol because you're taking something that has inherently sugary. You let those sugars ferment in some kind of other substance, and then boom, the alcohol that you can consume li- liquid is going to be there. So, so at this point, he ends up killing William Defoe. There's an axe right in his head, and he has the keys now. So he's like, "Okay, I already murdered this guy. You know, I finally got the keys. You know, who cares? I've already, you know, all is all done is done. That's it. I'm gonna go see this light that, you know, that I've been wanting to see throughout this whole damn movie. So there he goes." He's all bloody, he's all wet and everything because of the damn storm, the damn weather, everything's, you know, he, he's beaten up, he's tired, so he makes his way up to, uh, walking up this big long staircase up the lighthouse, unlocks the door and makes his way to go and see, he sees this big old glass, uh, I, I don't know the name of it, but it's like for the lighthouse, it's like the big old glass eye, anyways, it has like a little door and he ends up opening it. He sees the light and the light is so intense that you can't tell you can't you can't even you don't know what the light is. You have yeah. no idea what the light is. You just see it from the light's point of view looking the, what, at Doesn't it doesn't it open too on its own like the fucking the little thingy, you know? Like it opens up and it's just like welcome welcome welcoming him. To, yeah, like to go in and almost. He's like screaming for. He he sees the light and he starts screaming, but the scream is not like a. It, this is like a, another favorite part of mine, mm-hmm. is that when he's screaming, it's not his voice. It's like, it's kind of like they turned off his voice, and they turned on the bass. So every time he screams, it's like the bass for your surround sound or whatever you're listening to, is just vibrating. So all you, it's like you're all you're hearing every time he screams it, you're hearing vibrations of his voice. It's like so obscure and scratchy. It's like it's so weird. And then once the light kind of dissipates and that whole scene goes, it goes back towards the outside of the of that building out there on the edge of the waters, and you see Robert Patterson, bloodied, naked on the floor with his intestines out exactly how William Defoe described it when he was pissed off d- cursing him about Neptune ripping out his guts, stabbing him with a trident. Pretty much he's out there with his guts and seagulls are just they're eating his guts. And that's pretty much how the movie ends. Now you can see it that he was in hell the whole time. He was under hallucinations. They, I mean, there's so many different perspectives you can watch this movie as. Right. Uh, but honestly, at this point, I mean, I like to say that this was uh, hallucinations and he just kind of went crazy the whole time. You know, solitude can make you go get that cabin fever. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there listening that probably, uh, you know, with the whole COVID thing, probably understand a little bit of that. But see, we have TV, we got on demand uh, we we got music we got all kinds of stuff to keep us entertained these guys 
it was just them, just liquor. <laughs> That's it, you know. <laughs> I mean, shit. It, these these guys are these guys are going crazy. So they didn't even, they didn't even have radio back then. They didn't even like like the fires chats FDR would do in the late thirties, early forties, and yeah. like the fucking Orson Welles radio listens and all that stuff. Like they didn't even have that. Yeah, and a good point on that, uh, since you're mentioning that, too. Uh, their form of entertainment, like what they were doing, like, you know, of course, when every time we drink, we all want to hear some good music, you know, something to, you know, make our brains kind of tickle there. As far as these guys, they made their own music. So when they're super oh, yeah. drunk, they know yeah. the they know the song, so they start singing, they're pounding on the table, they're they're making their own music. They have no instruments, they're just doing it themselves. So they're jumping around back and forth and they're singing. Even at one point, and I thought this was so weird, they decided to hold each other and slow dance while one of them sang. <laughs> they were singing a slow song, so I was like, really? They're doing that, that swing your partner goes you know with like the el- the arm elbow crook connecting thing. <laughs> Yeah, they did that, and it was hilarious. Uh, I, I had a good time just watching them do it. Not that I would do that, but still. They, they even start fucking, like, play fighting, like 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 fist fighting, but not, like, angrily, just, like, for, and he goes, I, I, and he actually, like, hits him, and it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, it, it's their form of roughhousing, just uh, show masculinity, like, to show how yeah. tough they were, and that's how I took that. Uh, I mean, I, again, it wasn't aggressive, like, out of anger, Right, it wasn't just, him wanting to legit fuck him up. It was just, like, two guys bored having fun. Yeah, just two guys bored, like, hey, man, let's, you want to fight? Yeah, let's do it. And I don't know, uh, y'all have brothers and stuff like that uh, growing up. I mean, y'all roughhoused, you know, and stuff like that. So it's it would be similar, you know, just two guys just roughing it out, just beating the shit out of each other for no damn reason. <laughs> so it, it could be the drunk talk, just <laughs> them out of boredom whatever it is but yeah that's uh that's pretty much that whole movie i mean there's a lot of cool little snippet parts here and there that are pretty interesting but leave it to the viewer if you're interested in something entertaining like something artsy i think this is like a chill movie you want you know it's a good rainy day why not throw this kind of movie on mm-hmm. it's interesting it's weird uh, again you william defoe i mean if you're familiar familiar with his past movies what was it the testament or the uh, that testament yeah. movie you were mentioning right. exactly that or or like i was calling them the green goblin like you know spider-man with toby Maguire. i mean shit uh, i think that guy's a good ass actor you know for oh, the yeah. ladies you'll definitely love the robert patterson he has his little naked moments in there so go ahead ladies you know feel free to <laughs> pause those moments if you want i know chris <laughs> was pausing them shit <laughs> Dude, and like, and like, and like, here's the thing, like, I watch them, like, before they, like, I forgot, and I'm watching this here, like, I got the TV on, but that fist fight scene I was talking about, where they're, like, kind of play fighting with each other, whatever, and you go, hey, hi, and then they start, like, throwing punches, like, before that, they're fucking slow dancing, like, like, head to head against each other and shit, and, like, you know, you're gonna laugh, but I was, I was hearing in my head that Back to the Future, like, Earth Angel, Earth Angel, <laughs> Will, Will you, you be mine? mine? I mean, Chris starts slow dancing and shit. Yeah, dude, that's a good movie too. I like Back to the Future. Don't get Chris started on Back to the Future. So, <laughs> Chris, I want to know your 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 rating on this bad boy, dude. I want to know, you know, your thoughts, your experience, all that, all that good shit. Out of ten, I'm gonna give it eight out of ten. Mm, very very nice, sir. Very nice. And, and you know why? Don't know. Don't really like, think about it. Like it makes it makes sense. Like it's, I mean, just it just if you've ever read enough about people who have been in fucking out to sea for months on end, or if you know people who've been in prison, or people you know who've been in solitude or whatever like this, like the experience of these two guys, it makes perfect sense why they would react toward each other and behave toward each other the way they do like you just simply have to read billy bud you simply have to read like stories about people who have been out to sea for months on end didn't know when they were in a dock on land you simply have to watch you know realistic type movies and shows about people who have been in prison and how you you know when it's a bunch of men around each other in the absence of female companionship you start having that kind of 
odd sexual close with each other. Like, it, it makes sense. And, like, this whole thing, and, like, how you also can slowly go crazy in that solitude or in that environment of, like, a master subservient worker relationship like this is. Like, yeah, you're going to be fucked up in the head with all that for months on end. Yeah, it's going to fuck you up in the head. I and mean, then, yeah, there's going to be anger, there's going to be violence, there's going to be yelling, there's going to be profanity, there's going to be, like, outbursts of fucking, like, fucking up a seagull like that, everything. It's it's going to happen because the human being is not meant to live like that. You're meant to live in an ordinary society where you have some time to yourself, but then you do your daily work and then you interact with other people and stuff. That's the way we're meant to be. This is not how we're meant to be. And then you combine that with, this is loosely based on Edgar Allan Poe works. And so when you know anything about him, the fucking depression case he was, you know, all that other shit, it just, it makes all the sense of the world. The movie makes sense. I get it. I get everything about this movie. Is it the most fun, enjoyable movie? Is it in closed parameters? Yes, it is. Uh, but I get it, and it's it's as entertaining as a movie like this could possibly be. Agreed, yeah. It's, re- it's very self-contained, like you are saying, like, where it's the most out of the situation, given the situation. And at first, I was kind of like I said, they don't say anything at first, and they don't really. Then they start talking, really don't understand, and then it gets this crazy build up and then crazy ending. And for me, I give it an eight out of ten too. You know, shots at first, I was kind of like, whoa, what the fuck is this? And then I, you know, once you get into the, the to the mix of it, you're like, okay, now I understand why everyone's like, you know, talking about. You got to check it out. Like, it's not like overly. Um, not a lot of shit going on, but when it's the when business starts picking up, it does get you know really entertaining and that haunting you know foghorn and you know just constantly and you know the visions and all just the crazy imagery. It's fucking entertaining. It's like one of those movies that it's not as good as um what was that one that we did the other the, the other artsy movie you talked about, Chris, the, earlier. Suspiria. Suspiria. It's not Suspiria, you know, good, but it's really good and it's black and white different way with not as many people it's fucking two people right so no it was really i mean i it's one of those movies that like if i it, it's kind of weird to say but if it's like i want that relaxing but like interesting mood i'm gonna put on this you know what i mean where you're just kind of like to yourself with the madness of you know being trapped on a fucking island you know with just you know what you can you, you can really imagine this you know happening to to you or anybody else being like stuck on just you know fucking raining all the time and dealing with a crazy maniac you know so yeah eight out of ten for me really cool ass movie dude g money that yes, kid sir. that kid <laughs> <laughs> well uh i love this movie uh it's not my everyday watch, though. Uh, it, it, this is, uh, like you said, this is like one of those kind of like, you know, it's a chill movie. You know, every time I... Lo- this is very artsy. I, I do like that. There's a lot of great little things that I can appreciate this. Definitely, though, for like anyone viewing it for the first time, it, it's going to be weird and obscure for them just because of how they talk and how they kind of carry themselves. So it, it will be confusing at first, but they will, I mean, depending on how invested they're going to be into it, they'll either, they'll probably look up the references and stuff like that, and it'll make it look even more interesting. Or unless you're already familiar with that type of sailor talk or you like that theme, I mean, that would be cool too. Uh, uh, for, uh, for my taste though, I mean, I, I don't watch too many... It, this is kind of a little a bit uh, obscure for me uh, for like my kind of uh, typical taste of like certain movies that I really like to watch. I will watch this again. This is, don't get me wrong, but it, this is not, I probably won't watch it again probably for like several months because <laughs> I always have something that's always keeping me entertained or a certain, I, I like a certain theme of certain movies. And uh, so I'll have to give this like a good seven. It's not a bad movie. But it's definitely not like one of my like oh it's not my top ten. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's but it is it is good though. But um, I probably will not watch this for a while unless <laughs> you know again someone says hey you want to watch this movie? Uh, sure, I guess so. 
You know, I'm feeling <laughs> mellowed today. <laughs> I'm yeah. feeling mellowed. Throw that on. Yeah, it's a mellow. It's not. Yeah, it's not something I'm gonna like you said put on. Like, oh, you know, if I want to like enjoy myself, you know, there's a lot of you know better movies, but like just the the artsy, the relaxation towards it. But there's so much shit to watch. It's hard to say that you're gonna go back to certain films unless they're like really, really fucking entertaining. And we're like, we're the kind of guys that are we're always trying to watch different shit. You know, especially because we do the podcast. We're like, it's really enjoyable when you put on something and you don't know how it's gonna end. So you're like, kind of like, okay, you know, do that Chris routine, okay, you know, and uh, it just keeps on getting crazier and all that shit. So, oh, um, yeah, good ass film, fun film. Yeah, I mean, that's- the dread pirate sea being no man's debt. I make a barter with you, true as the North Star, in exchange for your kindness. I'll be splitting me buried treasure with you. Hey, you know, I, I appreciate it, man. You know, it's not really that necessary. You know, there's a few bucks here, a few bucks there, I think we'll be okay. Grr. Okay, Peter, I'll be on the Stairmaster. Okay, you know, just say it <laughs> I'll be on the Stairmaster. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> dodgeball and shit. Fucking funny shit. Anyway, I, uh,. Hope you guys that check this one out. You know, it's a it's a good fun film. I don't know what we're gonna do next. We just call it we call it up, you know, in the ring on the weekend. We're like, what do y'all feel like doing? So my do tells for the crypt. We were gonna do that last week, but kinda had a change of plans. But uh, you know, Christopher J, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And we'll see you on the next one. You gotta be shit me. That mother's strong. Peace. Peace. Man, I don't have one. Oh, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>